This meeting is being recorded. Hi there. Today we have the opportunity of speaking with Sylvester Jenkins III. Sylvester is the author of the book From Combat to Come Back, How to Conquer Life's Battles of Adversity. Instead of becoming a product of his environment, he decided to choose the path of joining the military and investing in himself. Sylvester has dedicated himself to sharing his life's work to empower others to become the best version of themselves. He believes that your start does not determine your finish. He calls himself the bounce back expert. Hello, Sylvester. Hello, Tammy, how you doing? I'm Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I'd love to talk to you today about your journey. It's, it sounds like it's just been remarkable. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's been a, a roller coaster ride, but definitely, you know, at the point that I am today, I know it was all for a purpose. Um, just as you stated, I'm originally from Columbus, Georgia. Uh, I grew up as a fatherless at risk youth. Uh, I was constantly surrounded by violence and negative influences and the streets became my playground. And I quickly found myself on a dangerous path. So uh, I failed multiple times in school, was struggling to find acceptance, security, identity, and purpose. And But it wasn't until I completely hit rock bottom that I realized that I needed to make a change. And that's when I uh, knew that I was gonna join the military because I, I knew what, um, what impact the military has, you know, it gives you a sense of purpose. It develops you as a, a leader, a soldier, or what, if you want to call it. But uh, even in the military, I found myself facing a fair share of hardships. Uh, it's what I call FASCO, right? FASCO stands for failure, adversity, uh, setbacks, challenges, and obstacles. And uh, during that time frame, you know, I, I deployed multiple times. I deployed five times, uh, four times to Iraq, one time to Afghanistan. And uh, after coming back from one of those, I suffered an acrimonious divorce and it took an extreme toll on my mental and emotional health. Um, but after, you know, those 21 years of service, I transitioned from the military and found myself facing another battle. I found myself facing the battle of finding myself and I was struggling to adjust to civilian life. Not only was the world hit by COVID, but I also found myself in a position of feeling alone, disconnected, from the world and also lost as far as what to do next. I was diagnosed with PTSD, anxiety and depression. I was uh, stressed, depressed and in debt up to my eyeballs. I had lost my mother that same year and was on the verge of losing my family and my home. And it was a painful experience. Uh, one that I continue to use as far as trying to help others uh, know the predominant force that they, uh, that they are and that they can be within their own life because I refuse to let that break me. You know, instead I use quarantine as an opportunity to grow and learn more about myself. And it's because of this that I realized that I had a choice, that I can either let the scars of childhood trauma, the military and COVID define me and hold me back, or I can choose to control my life and use my experiences to help others. And that's what I did. I turned my pain into my purpose and I found a new mission in life doing what I'm doing now and been titled the bounce back expert. First of all, thank you so much for sharing that and for your years of service that can, could not have been an easy uh, thing to go through. So talk to me a little bit about how you did find yourself. So you've, you're in COVID and you're, you're, you're down and out, you're not feeling great at all. How did you come out of that? What was your process? Uh, my, my process was um, seeking therapy. Uh, I found myself you know, in denial for a long period of time of my life saying that there wasn't nothing wrong with me. And that's one of the first things that we do. I think one of the biggest lies that people t often tell themselves when they are experiencing some type of hardship is that I'm fine. You know, they tell that to people around them and they also tell that to themselves. And I believe that the words we speak create the harvest that we reap. And so I'm going through the motions of telling people I'm fine with really on the inside, inside of my head, I'm telling, I'm, I'm feeling down. I'm feeling uh, out of out of order. I'm feeling, you know, uh, scattered all over the place. And it was truly hard for me. Uh, but I started seeking therapy. And when I started seeking therapy, they uh, started using uh, CBT, uh, cognitive, cong uh, cognitive uh, behavioral therapy. And it and it's in that that I learned how to reframe, uh, reframe my thoughts and put things in perspective. 
And when I started putting things in perspective, I noticed that uh, the fears that I had when it came to some of the things that I was experiencing that caused the anxiety, that caused the depression. I started using my prefrontal cortex to make, you know, the right decisions and look at problem solving instead of just seeing it as an issue. Because, you know, your, uh, your perception affects your performance. And, you know, how we view things is how we do things. And a lot of times the problem is not the problem, it's our perception of the problem. Because your thoughts drive your emotions and your emotions drive your behavior, which affects your performance. So by learning how to reframe and going through therapy was the, the most amazing thing for me. And I also strengthened my, uh, my level of resilience and educated myself during that time frame. Also, you know, started speaking out more and then um, just taking a moment to really uh, indulge in self-care. I started exercising. I started doing meditation, prayer and devotion. You know, it started exploring nature, going on hikes and things like that. So those were some of the things that were beneficial to me. And then also just um, journaling. That's how the book came about from Comeback to Comeback. Uh, I started journaling, writing more about the experiences that I had and peeling back the onions of what caused me to be in certain positions that I was in throughout the time span of my life. Fantastic. All of those are great tools. Absolutely. And I think you had some influences that I understand from watching some of your other um, social media platforms that you had some influences from like Zig Ziglar and these types oh, of, yes. yeah, that helps change your mindset. Oh, yes, absolutely. So I, I believe one of the greatest universities that you can ever go to is YouTube University. I think it made more millionaires than Harvard or Stanford ever have. And I started looking at people like Zig Ziglar, Bob Proctor, uh, Brian Tracy. I started looking at all these guys, man, uh, Les Brown. And I noticed Tony Robbins. I, I, when I started, this became like, uh, like a football player studying film. I was watching these guys like it was no tomorrow. I quickly, um, what I did was purge all my social media, uh, the things that I watched. I canceled my cable and just started watching YouTube, vers YouTube University and started watching these guys on a daily basis. And uh, I always tell people, uh, watch what you watch because you tune into what you turn into. So when I started watching these guys and they was giving their messages and they was giving uh, tools and strategies, then I was like, man, I can do this. I can do the same thing. And I started applying these things. And once I started applying them, I noticed that they was working. And so I was like, man, uh, if it can work uh, for you, it can work for somebody else as well. So I just wanted to take some of the things that they did. It was no purpose to reinvent the wheel, but just make it my own. So that's what I did. Can you talk a little bit more about that you turn into what you tune into? I love that sentence. Oh, uh, yeah. So um, I always tell people to watch what they watch because what, uh, what we consume, our subconscious mind is processing that stuff. And we might not even know it. Some a lot of times we're on autopilot and we're just continuing to go through our day-to-day -day lives. But the things that we consume on a daily basis, when, it, when we're looking at social media, you can get so wrapped up in social media, you can go from trying to explore one thing and end up watching multiple videos on social media. And they're not always good for you. It just attracts you in some type of way. But when you're watching... Uh, say like if you're listening to music, if you're not going through anything or experiencing anything in your life and you listen to a sad love song, you're going to start to feel the emotion behind it. And you you slowly turn into what you tuned into. Uh, say like if you're watching a horror movie, like, you know, your your mind is like a garden and what you feed it, like what you water it with, whether it's something negative or whether it's something positive, it's going to reciprocate whatever you give it. You know, it's just like a, 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 they say there's two different types of wolves. You know, you have the one that's uh, evil and bad, and then you have the one that's great and good. And the one that comes out the most is the one that you feed, the feed the most, and whichever wolf that might be. So if you're all, I never heard of anybody going to do any type of uh, bad thing that was listening to classical music. I never heard anybody that was, um, found themselves in a position of going to work out at a gym and they was listening to something that was negative. It's always something that's going to motivate you and encourage you that you're listening to in order to push you forward wherever you're going. 
So watch what you watch because what you tune into, you turn into. It's one of those things you were talking about growing up in Georgia, like you probably weren't listening to, you know, any kind of classical music when you were out on the streets oh, or no. your playground. Uh, I believe, uh, uh, yeah, I, I believe your environment dictates your requirement. And sometimes you have to separate in order to elevate. And, and that's one of the major things that I found myself in a position doing. I knew the military was I was going to be able to travel the world. I knew I was going to have to be in a different location than where I was uh, growing up at. So it just um, struck me as an opportunity that I just couldn't let go of. In your book, you talk about there's a way that people can banish 90% of their worries. What's that all about? Yes. So uh, when it comes down to it, I got something I call the three R's. And that's recognize, reflect, and release, right? And it's a way that, uh, as I said before, dealing with the reframing. So you recognize the situation. You reflect on the situation, like how is it affecting me? Uh, you look at the positives and you look at the negatives behind it. You look at what you can learn from it and how you can grow from it. And then you reframe your mind in order to like release whatever unprocessed emotions or uh, unhealthy things that you were dealing with at that time in order to build healthier habits behind the stuff that you was experiencing. You can write down on a sheet of paper all the things that you're going through, the things that you're experiencing, the things that are calling, causing you depression, the things that are calling, causing you the anxiety, and then put a line through everything that you can control. I mean, that you, yeah, put a line through everything that you can't control and focus more on the things that you can control. And by doing that, you reframe everything that you deal with in order to experience only, you know, focus on the problems that you're currently going through that you can not take care of. Well, that's wonderful. And then how, what do you do with what after you've figured out, OK, I can't control that. So I'll scratch that off the list. I can control this. But what happens with when those worries are still in the background of your mind percolating? Yeah, so when those things are on the back of your mind still percolating, this is an opportunity for you to have somebody to, you know, call on, whether it's a trusted friend or family member, or even, you know, like I tell people all the time, it's uh, one of the best things that I ever did was seek therapy in order to get more information. Uh, I got something that I call uh, SOS, and it's uh, stop what you're doing, uh, breathe in some oxygen, and seek more information. And a lot of times that's what we need to do. We need to take a moment to stop what we're doing because we can, like I said, if it's still on the back of your brain that, that heavy, oxygen, the air that we breathe is one of the best things that we can do. We can control our breathing. It's all about uh, having a sense of control that helps us to release a lot of pressure that we, that we deal with. And by breathing in this oxygen, we'll be able to take an opportunity to digress from what we're experiencing. And then we go seek more information. Hey, let me call uh, my mother. Let me call my, uh, uh, my therapist, whoever it might be that can probably give me more information on the situation that I'm currently dealing with. Even if, if we deal with like financial hardships, there are financial advisors out there, you know? So all these things can be put into place in order to help you uh, alleviate that pain that you might be dealing with at that time. Mm, I think re reaching out is vitally important. And like you said, oxygen, there's so much research that's been done on this. And as a yoga teacher, you're speaking my language because I want people to stop and pause and breathe. It makes such a difference in, in your life. Absolutely. I totally agree. What is the greatest unaddressed public health threat that you speak about in your book? Mm, that, that, that is one of the major things. And, and it's adverse childhood experiences. ACEs is one of the, uh, the greatest things that's unaddressed. You don't hear nobody really talking about it. Adverse childhood experiences can dictate your health and your future. Uh, whether you experience uh, child molestation as a kid, whether you experience you know, um, uh, abuse, whether it was physical or, or verbal, uh, all these things can affect you as you develop and grow during your life. 
It can cause a lot of health issues as far as uh, heart disease. It can cause uh, cancer. Uh, it's so many things that this unaddressed situation that people barely talk about. And these are some of the, uh, the things that cause you a lot of the stress and anxiety you might deal with because the habits that you develop or the morals or the values that you develop over time came from when you was a child. You know, the house that you grew up in, uh, the way your parents raised you, uh, some of the things you experienced while you was at school. Like, um, say, for instance, if uh, I got bullied as a, as a kid, right? And the kid that wore, uh, that bullied me wore a blue T-shirt, right? As I got older, I now apply for a job and I get hired. And then all of a sudden, I just show up late for work one day. Just because my clock, my I didn't set my alarm the previous day. And all of a sudden, my boss comes in and he's getting on me. And it just so happened that he's wearing a blue polo shirt and he's getting on me about the situation. I'm going to crawl back into my hole of when I was that youth, when I was that child of being bullied, all because of the experience that I faced during my childhood. And it puts you in a position where all these negative thoughts start going through your brain. And that's where you have to go through the motion of reframing. That's no longer me. That's not who I am anymore. And I really need to uh, find an opportunity to recognize this, reflect on it, and release it. So adverse childhood experiences are one of the major things that is rarely addressed. And it can cause one of the biggest harms on a lot of people across the globe. Because at some point in time, we all experienced it. Absolutely. It's the stories that we tell ourselves time and time and time again. And then it's yes. like that it turns out that we're just on autopilot because you've said that story for so long. But what if it were not true? Yeah. What it, it, none of this is actually true. I, I, this is this is my personal opinion, because, uh, the like I said before, the way we uh, the way we view things is how we do things. And a lot of times um, I think. Once you get a strong understanding of where your uh, the people around you were, once you have that level of empathy, uh, develop a strong level of emotional intelligence, what I like to call self mastery, you're able to uh, take you able to take away some of the situations because the problem, like the the person, is not the problem, right? So you take an opportunity to have this level of self mastery and to have that empathy for the people. Who are, who are sharing these things with you. Like um, I know uh, my, my stepfather was an alcoholic, right? And he used to do a lot of things that was, you know, un, un, um, I'm trying to find the exact word for it. That wasn't, you know, be, uh, unbecoming of a man, in my opinion. And in the sense of that, I could sit there and take all that stuff in and say, I'm gonna be an alcoholic too, or I'm no good. But in all actuality, he was dealing with his own demons. He was dealing with his personal problem, but I would never see that as a child. But it takes some time as a, you know, growing up and developing that level of self-awareness and being able to recognize and look at that individual and have that level of empathy and like, man, he got some trauma going on from his childhood that he just hasn't been able to overcome. And to be able to step back and say, that's not me. That's not who I am. That's not who I will become. I can learn from that because your past is only a reference. It's not your residence. You don't have to stay there. You can build from, from those situations and just develop that level of emotional intelligence in order to peel back and know who you truly are. Find that predominant being within yourself and become stronger and more resilient behind the situation that you experienced in your childhood. Very well said. You're such a good speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Practiced a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now, let's talk about purpose. Oh, yes. Purpose. I, every Everybody was created on purpose for a purpose. I, regardless of who you are, where you came from, your background doesn't dictate none of that. You know, that was, you know, just the start of who you were becoming. And sometimes you got to go through the trials and tribulations. I tell everybody they're like a piggy bank and you've been placed inside of you a purpose. And sometimes you got to go through the beating and the shaking in order to get it out of you. You got to be broken in order to get that purpose out of you from time to time. That's what I feel happened to me. 
And when that purpose come about, it's something that you have a strong passion for. You know, passion is the secondary part of being having that purpose. And when you have that that purpose in your life, everything, everything around you will totally change to a way that you uh, feel like you have uh, you are meant to serve at some capacity, regardless of what it is. I think I have a great feeling. I, I, I think I can agree with you that it's, it gives you a wonderful feeling on the inside to know that the things that you're doing with this podcast help other individuals. You're providing a service. We're all meant to serve in some capacity. It's all about finding that purpose in serving that can give you that, that, that strong feeling in life that you need in order to be the predominant force on this earth. Now, what would we say to listeners who can't find their purpose or they feel like they don't know what that means? How do you give them direction to find a purpose? Uh, absolutely. So I got this thing that I call uh, GPS, right? And it stands for goals, purpose, and a strategy. Because once we know our goals and we understand our purpose and we have a strategy in order to achieve them, there's no reason why we can't reach our destination, right? But in trying to achieve that purpose, you want to real you want to recognize what your why is. You know, once you recognize your why, then you want to break down the steps. What causing me to have this much uh, passion for pursuing art? Because we all were uh, created to be creators. And a lot of times when we're working at these jobs that we don't like and we find ourselves exhausted mentally and emotionally and we want to quit, it's because you're not fulfilling your purpose. But when you find yourself in a position of writing down your why, what's the what's the the main outcome that you want to achieve? What do you have a love for? Like I have a love for uh, my family. I have a love for uh, pouring into others. And I have, uh, from what people told me, a great voice. So I was like, man, how can I use this in order to, you know, uh, provide a service to people that would give them uh, a spirit of hope? Uh, that will help them to be able to overcome the challenges and turn their setbacks into comebacks. And I realized my story, my life, I embraced it and I was able to provide that. But write down your why, realize what you have a love for and a passion for, and then take the opportunity to uh, dissect the steps that you need in order to achieve those things. Because like I said before, somebody's already been there and done that. And a lot of times uh, people don't like to do research, but YouTube has everything that you need. If you type in what you're looking for, how to change the oil in your car, how to uh, learn how to write a book, how to whatever it might be, how to overcome adversity. It's all there for you. And all you have to do is just take it and run with it to do what you need to do in order to find your purpose. That's fantastic advice. Thank you. One other thing that you talked about earlier in the podcast today is uh, meditation. What kind of meditation did you practice or do you currently practice? Uh, so the type of meditation, you know, I just take the opportunity to uh, just relax and just lay down. <laughs> I, I lay down on the floor, spread eagle, and I just start working on my breathing, controlling my breathing, inhale, exhale, inhale uh, for eight seconds, release, breathe it out. And uh, I do that for roughly about 15 minutes. And then from after that, I go into prayer and devotion. But uh, before then, I just, you know, try to just loosen up my body and just, you know, try to have somewhat of an outer body experience to the point that I get my day started on a, a fresh path compared to all the things that I experienced either the day prior or, you know, just waking up in the morning. You know, I think it's the best way to start your morning uh, for anybody, just to take an opportunity to work on your breathing, just to get yourself reset, um, to really take an opportunity to get ready to experience this wonderful thing called life. Fantastic. Do you add in a visualization component when you're doing all of this or you're just breathing and, and that's your focus at the time? No, so uh, my focus at the time is to... Um, to have a level of gratitude, to uh, really think about all the things that uh, I'm grateful for in that time frame. So uh, my my level of meditation is more. Um, I was I would like to say is me uh, taking the opportunity to lay down, 
uh, relax, uh, release any negative energy, uh, then also work on my breathing. But then just say to myself uh, words of affirmation of the things that I'm grateful for. I play like a video or listen to some music. I mean, not actually music, but uh, some repetitive words that saying like, uh, uh, I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful just listening to these things and taking the opportunity to really uh, just be in another world and just focusing on self. Mm, that's awesome. Have you seen um, Snoop Dogg's video? He did the, an affirmation song. I don't know what he called it. I think no. it was mostly generated towards children. But yeah, it's definitely worth a YouTube watch. And it's all positive affirmations that he does along with his music. So he'll like say a sentence and then he repeats it again and you're to repeat it with him. And what? yeah, it's, yeah, and it's great. It, like I said, it's more geared towards kids, but right. it's I think anybody can use it of value because it's and it's got a funky background too. So it's <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely check that out. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So if you had one more thing that you wanted to leave listeners with, what would it be? Uh I would have I would definitely tell people um that you are not a product of your uh you're not uh a victim of your circumstances. You're a product of your decisions. And in doing so, you have a choice. You have a choice to be better than you were yesterday or remain bitter. But at the same time, don't allow the situation that you experience in life to dictate your future. Be the pilot and not be the passenger. Take control of your life and become who you are strongly meant to be and find your purpose and become that person. That's great. Thank you so much. And Sylvester, where do we direct people to find you on social or online? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can uh, go to my website at uh, SylvesterJenkins.com or you can go on any social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and just type in Sylvester Jenkins the third. And then you can also find my book from combat to Comeback: how to conquer the life battles of adversity on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, and also uh, Google Play. That's great. Thank you. We'll put those links in the show notes so that people can just one click and find them. Thank you very much for taking time for us today. We fully appreciate it. And it's been a great conversation. I think we could have kept it going for a while, but <laughs> we oh, have yeah. to have time <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me again. I love what you're doing. I greatly appreciate the opportunity and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Thank you. And you. Bye, y'all.